And turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I want to bring a message the Lord laid on my heart, I believe, an important message. Um, as you're turning in your Bibles there, just want to ask you to be really be praying for me and Angie in our marriage. Um, something happened last night, and I mean, we need your prayers. Um, I got caught up in a game last night and um, brought my iPad into bed, and it was Gonzaga versus UCLA, and I wasn't, you know, I got to preach on the Resurrection Sunday, so I was trying to get to bed early, but it became an awesome game. It went into overtime, and I don't know if you watched it, I don't know if you watched the game, but Gonzaga won on a last second three-point shot from half court, and I was in bed, and Angie had already fallen sound asleep. and. Uh, the moment it went in, I was like, yes, like that. And I woke her straight up, and uh, she did not sleep very good after that. So be praying for her, okay? Pray for me. I'm sorry, Angie. I apologize. But uh, anyway, just that has absolutely nothing to do with my, mer my, my uh, message. But I know that if uh, there's division in the home, then God doesn't anoint quite like that. So forgive me. I need the anointing, all right? I need the anointing. So... 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Paul is talking here, and uh, Paul says, clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened, for Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. And what I want to say, I, I'm going to really kind of uh, take it out of context for a minute and apply it to what I believe the Lord wants to speak to us, and I believe even to many in the church, I believe he's speaking this to the church, is this particular, this is the last day of Passover, it's Resurrection Sunday, but this particular Passover, I believe, has a special significance to it. And there is, I believe, a dying of the old, that God wants to let old things that are keeping you in bondage to die, and he wants to bring us into the new, that God wants to launch a great reset in his church. And, and really, that's a, a big theme of this message today is God, you know, all that we've been through in 2020, I mean, it's just been, I mean, raise your hand if you enjoyed 2020. <laughs> okay, wow, that's great. But y'all should actually be preaching instead of me. But for many people, trust me, as a pastor, you see it, for many people, 2020 was like one of the worst years of our lives. It was just such a, was, I mean, it was just, I never have lived through such a crazy time in my life. But I remember this time last year, it was on Good Friday. I was driving to the old building where we were at, and I was going to, I was preaching uh, the, the Resurrection Sunday message on that, on that Good Friday and driving there, there was absolutely, I mean, there may be just a, a few, a handful of cars were on the roads. I mean, it was completely empty, completely desolate. I mean, you think back a year ago, that's when we were still disinfecting our groceries and disinfecting deliveries, and we didn't know how bad COVID was or whatever. There was a lot of anxiety and fear related to all that. And I remember just driving, there was the weirdest feeling, and then going, uh, going and preaching to an empty room about an empty tomb. I just will never forget, just like this is just the, the weirdest feeling in the world when, you know, everyone is so excited. I mean, even the people who don't walk with God come to church and you're excited on Easter. And so, but there was no one there. And uh, I, I just believe that 2020, the year 2020, was as if God was taking his church corporately and identifying us with the death of Jesus Christ. And there are times when, when the Lord, Paul talks about this, when the Lord works the dying of Jesus into us, where, the, where we begin to experience the actual dying of Jesus in us, where things in our lives are put to death, hopes are put to death, selfish ambitions are put to death, dreams are put to death, you know, in so many different ways, put to death, and, and God's goal isn't to leave you dead. God's goal is to bring, like we're celebrating today, a resurrection. And so Paul said that the dying of Jesus might work in us, so also the life of Jesus would be released in us, through us, affecting you. And so I believe what God has done in 2020, you, he has used this pandemic 
to bring a death and a co-crucifixion with Jesus Christ with his corporate church because he wants to bring out a resurrection. I believe 2021, we're four months into it, at the beginning of four months, God wants to resurrect his church out of all that 2020 has been so that we would live by the resurrection power of God. No matter what has died in you and no matter what death you have been through, the Lord is wanting to now bring forth resurrection life in you and through you. Amen. Listen, Jesus is alive. That's why we're celebrating today. Jesus is alive. He is not in the grave. He is alive. But I want you to get this. Jesus is not only alive, he is alive in you. That makes it personal. That brings it home. Jesus Christ is alive in you. Think about that for a second. Let that become revelation. Jesus Christ is alive in you. You are alive on the inside. You are not dying in terms of dying like the world's dying, but because Christ is in you, the, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now dwells inside of you. We have the very power that raised Jesus from the dead alive in us, so now Paul says, your spirit is alive. We have experienced a resurrection if we've been born again. Amen. And so what I want to talk about in this message, and in fact, I'm going to do a, a big series on this for the next several weeks about the great reset God wants to bring in his church. And I'm going to be speaking out of Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. So go ahead and turn there, Hosea chapter 6. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to share just a quick overview of where we're going for the next several weeks, and then I'm going to get into the line by line of what the Lord is, I believe, speaking here. But Hosea, in Hosea 6.1, he says, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day so that we may live before him. Now catch this. This is, this is the exhortation God gives us. So let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. If anything there is God is saying to his church in 2021 is to know the Lord, not just to know about him, not just to know facts about the resurrection, not just to know facts about the crucifixion, not just to know facts and information about what Jesus did for us on the cross, but to actually enter into that by experience. The experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what God wants to bring us into. He wants to bring us into an experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ that bypass, I don't want to say bypasses, that's greater than the brain, greater than human intelligence, that is a spiritual knowing of the Lord that comes. So Hosea says, let us press on, let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn. Just as we saw the sun rise, his going forth is just as certain as that. He's coming to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. And so I believe through this, just to summarize what, if you wanted to summarize what Hosea 6, 1 through 3 is about, I believe it's, it's really speaking of, in terms of applied prophetically in this season we're in, you know, throughout history, this passage of scripture has been applied to the resurrection or the, uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus where Israel corporately experienced death in the Messiah for two days. On the third day he was revived and he came to them like rain on the day of Pentecost, though only with the remnant. Others have interpreted Hosea 6, 1 through 3 more from an end time perspective where Israel would be uh, go into a death type experience for 2,000 years and it started in 66 AD 
Okay, I won't go into all the details of that, but they, they're, they're, there's coming a time when God's going to resurrect them. Now, I believe both of those are valid interpretations of this passage. But what I want to say is I want to take this and apply it to what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to his church in 2021. There's coming a great reset in the, in the church. Jesus has used in his church this crazy time of 2020 to bring about a great reset. Now, I believe there's coming, and I'm going to t talk about this as I unfold it, but God wants us to rebuild based on his life, based on all that he's saying. But I, there's coming a reset, I believe, in our personal vision. A lot of people are like, okay, I, don't, I kind of have lost vision. I've lost, you know, I've lost kind of some goals. I don't really see where I'm going. And, and I think the Lord wants to bring a reset, a personal vision. Um, and I'm going to talk about that. But it's, it's basically like God wants to get us centered back on knowing him as our primary life vision. Living by his life and living to see his eternal purpose fulfilled. So there's a great reset as it, as it applies to your personal vision God wants to bring into your life to you say, okay, there is so much more, there is so much more to life than what I'm living for, and it's all about Him. It's about living for the eternal rather than the temporal. There's a, a reset coming even in our corporate vision where our personal ambitions are laid aside so we can pursue his presence together in a much greater way. I believe we've only tapped into the surface of the presence of God he wants to release here at the end of the age. God wants to release his glory. God wants to release his manifest presence into houses of God, into spiritual temples, so that, that at the end of the age there would be the manifest presence of God dwelling in his church. And, I, and, I, and I'm saying there's coming a reset in terms of our personal corporate vision that we're no longer living by personal ambition, but we want to pursue him together. See, what God's doing, he's doing corporately. He's not doing individually. The idea of this me and Jesus type thing where I'm going to, we need to know Jesus, me and Jesus in the prayer closet, but that this me and Jesus attitude was only in the prayer closet. I'm telling you, that's not only the only thing God's doing. What God is doing, he's doing corporately. May God put to death the individualism and the independence so that we could come into the corporate God has been wanting and he's looking for. His eternal purpose is a corporate man. His eternal purpose is a bride, not brides. What God is doing, he's doing corporately. And so there is a reset even in our corporate vision that we would make ourselves ready for him, that we would prepare the bride of Christ locally, nationally, internationally, and become that true spiritual family God wants. Not only is there a reset coming in our corporate vision, but there's coming a worship reset. There's coming a worship reset, and I believe throughout the entire church, if those who have ears to hear, is I believe God's done with the worship movement as we have known it for the past 20, 30 years. Well, we're marked by bands and brands, and we're chasing after the latest, greatest person who has the, you know, whatever. I believe God's done with that. He's calling for, but he's not done with the worship movement. He's done with the worship movement as we've known it. There's a worship reset coming. And that worship reset that's coming is a holy of holies, face-to-face, -face, experiential, vertical worship to the Lord, where we move from singing about the Lord and singing about what he's done for us to singing to the Lord vertically in intimacy. So it's a worship reset God is bringing. There's a presence of God reset where we're getting to the point where I believe uh, hopefully more and more of the church, I'm speaking globally, are now realizing, okay, listen, we can't do church based on, on human talent or human creativity or human resources. If anything, 2020 has taught us is like, okay, we have got to have the manifest presence of God. Please, like Moses, I would say this to all of us, let's not even do church if God's not here. If God's manifest presence is not here, if God's glory is not here, let's just stay home. There's no point. May we have that kind of hunger and that kind of attitude to say, 
unless his presence is here among us, don't, don't even make us wake up and go to church. But thank God his, mani his manifest presence is here and his manifest presence is increasing. But that's going to increase even more. I believe we're going to enter into the glory realm of God that we've barely tasted. But that's coming. It's a presence of God reset. I think it was A.W. Tozer said that if, that if uh, most churches, if the Holy Spirit withdrew from most churches, most of them would have no idea that he had even left. Because we're just operating on man's wisdom, man's creativity, man's talent, man's ability. We need the presence of God like never before, and especially the times we live in. Now, I believe there's also a church reset. We were still, so much of the church is still in this mentality of, of we go to church. Church is what we do. And I want to say church is not where we go. Church is not what we, where we go on Sunday. Church is not an event. Church does not start at 10 and you get here at 945. Sorry, I want to just encourage that. Thank you for everyone that did. But church is more than that. Church is so much more than a service we go to, an event we attend. Church, you are the church. You are the church. Whatever is, because you have Christ living in you, you are the church. You are the organic expression of his indwelling life. May we come into the much deeper understanding and much deeper revelation of what church really is. It's more, much more than an event. It's much more than a place you go. We are the living expression of the body of Christ because we have his life here locally. There's coming a church reset. There's coming a ministry reset. And I'm going to go into these in a lot more detail in the next several weeks. But what it truly means to be a prophetic people, what it truly means to be a company of people anointed as forerunners in the spirit and the power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so, you know, I'm just so gripped with this burden that the church of Jesus Christ locally, nationally, internationally, desperately needs to be made ready for the times we live in and to be made ready for the Lord himself. There's a ministry reset. God is wanting to release a corporate anointing that's greater upon us as we head into this decade. And there's a multiplication reset. And what I mean by that is the church has been through a pruning season in 2020. God has pruned the church. God has cut back the church. And I believe God has exposed many things in the church. God has brought down our idols. God has brought down our worship of politicians and you know, spiritual leaders. God has brought that down to a, to a crashing halt. And there's a, but I believe in that. There's been that pruning season. And that pruning season, God now wants to bring forth fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. There's coming a great multiplication of fruit in the, in the church of Jesus. I believe we're about to enter into a great time of fruitfulness. So now, with that said, let's go back into Isaiah, or Hosea, chapter 6, verse 1. And Hosea, I'm just going to break apart some of what he said here. The first thing Hosea said, I love it, it's beautiful. He said, come. I mean, it's so easy just to, you know, go right into the, the, the more of the message, but the, the Lord's heart, the Lord's heart is Come. In fact, I remember this time last year, the Lord had me preach a series of messages from John chapter 6 about come, come, come. The Lord is calling us to come to him. I believe that that message is still what the Lord is saying. Come to me. Come to me. This whole thing is about coming to a person, a real person. See, I believe the Lord is saying, come to me. Come to me. The Lord wants us more and more to come to him. 
to dine together with him, to have communion with him, to have intimacy with him. Amen. I agree. I'm glad someone's awake. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, listen to the Lord's heart. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me. That's the Lord's heart for you. So much more than going to church. Now, we definitely need to go to church. But so much more than just our religious activities. God's heart is for intimacy with you. He is a relational God. He's calling for us to be in this deep place of communion and intimacy with him. To dine together with him, to fellowship with him, spirit to spirit, heart to heart. To abide in him. To abide in him in you. Think about that. The Lord would speak and say, abide in me in you. What an incredible treasure. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because he is alive and he is alive in you, you can now have an abiding connection with God, with the spirit of Jesus Christ, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That is awesome. Come and dine together with him. In John 6, which we talked about last year, Jesus is calling us, he's saying, come to me and experience intimacy with me. Believe in me and experience rest in your souls. Eat of me and experience satisfaction in your heart. Drink of me and experience refreshment in your mind, will, and emotions. Behold me and experience an unfolding revelation of who he truly is. Abide in me and experience constant connection to his life. Live by me and experience the power to overcome the world, the flesh, the devil, and the self-life. See, the Lord is, is saying out of Hosea 6, come, come, come to me. Amen. If you don't get anything else out of today, may you be found intimate with the Lord. May you be found intimate with the Lord. May you be one who knows the Lord intimately with him. The next thing Hosea said, after he said, come, he said, let us return to the Lord. I believe that in this time we live in, that the Lord has brought a great pruning, a great, a, a great shaking to the church of Jesus Christ. We have experienced his judgment. We have experienced judgment begins in the house of God. We have experienced, the church has experienced a judgment, a discipline of the Lord, and he's calling us to return back to him, return back to him, not return back to religious activity, not return to doing things for God, not to return to like going to this event or that event or whatever, but a returning to him. The Lord says, let us return to the Lord. See, when the Lord came and he came to the church of Ephesus, he said, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. You've left your first love. If we've left our first love, then returning to the Lord is returning back to the first love, to where Jesus Christ would be the first love of our hearts and our passion. See, examine your heart. Where have I left my first love? Where has that intimacy died? Where has that communion been cut off? Where has that passion I once burned with, where has it gone? The Lord wants to revive the church and bring out a holy, passionate love for Jesus Christ that burns on our heart like never before. Are you right now more in love with Jesus Christ than you have ever been or has your love for him diminished? Has your flame of passion for him gone down? Has your intimacy with him been cut off or disconnected or distracted? Because God is saying to the church, return to the Lord. Return. 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 
Amen. Return to your first love. The reason our nation is in such a mess is because the church has departed from the Lord himself. And he's calling us. This is a, this is a, a call of God. Come back to the Lord. Come back to him. Come back to intimacy with him. Put away the distractions. Put away the care. Put away the busyness. Put away those things and have that intimacy with him. That's what you've been created for. You've been created for relationship with God. You have not been created. You have not been saved to experience a religion. God is utmost relational. God is utmost wants to be intimate with you, his beloved. God wants to be, God wants you to have this intimate dining experience with him. That is the heart of Jesus to his church. Not to be consumed with all the busyness and all the external things and all the doings and going ons and this place and that place. God is calling us to a place of deep intimacy with him like Mary of Bethany. Like Matthew 25, the wise virgins who got oil. The Lord said, he knew them. He knew them. God knows the ones who love him. May we be found in that secret place of intimacy, leaning on the heart of the beloved, leaning on the heart of Jesus Christ, hearing the heartbeat of Jesus Like John the Apostle, leaning on his heart, hearing the thumping, pounding of the heart of the bridegroom as he calls you and beckons you into intimacy with him. Return to me. That's what he says in the prophets. That's what he says in Malachi. That's what he says in Zechariah. If you return to me, I will return to you. It's not the Lord who's distant. It's us who's distant. If you feel distant and far away from the Lord, it's not because of him. Return to me, and I will return to you. Now, this also, this call to return is not just a call individually, though it is. It's more than a call individually. It is a corporate call. Notice what Hosea said. He said, let us return, let us, let us, let us return to the Lord. See, in America, with our freedom and our liberty and our independence and our individualism, we bring that into the church and we, we, it really contradicts the way God has worked in his word for thousands of years. He's a corporate God. Now, there is an individual component to it, but what God's building, God's building corporately. What God's doing, he's building corporately. God wants to bring forth a bride that is connected to him. It is a corporate representation of what God's doing. God can never have what he wants only by individuals who are disconnected from one another. He's building a corporate man. The individualism, the independence has to die because what God's building, he's building together corporately. So there is a returning, a corporate returning, a corporate returning to our first love, a corporate returning where we, when we come together, we're coming together to worship God with everything we've got. We're coming together to experience his presence, to experience the moving of the Spirit, to experience Jesus Christ. We're not coming just to sing songs or hear a message or you know, see a miracle or a healing or a prophecy. We're coming to come under the headship of the man Jesus Christ as his body. So the returning to the Lord also includes a corporate returning. Now that we have a, most of us here, I just want to just stress, there's a trend going on. It's not just here, but it's around the, it's around the world. There's a, there's a trend. Uh, COVID 2020 really accelerated it that said, okay, well, church isn't really that important. I'll just watch it online. Look, I thank God we have church online, and I know that some for particular reasons can't come. And I know some were, depending on where they live, especially if they're listening online, they can't find a church worth going to. I understand all that. But we've got to just remember what 
Hebrews 10, 25 said is, listen, the day of the Lord is approaching. The day of the Lord is coming swift. And, he, and, and the writer of Hebrews said, let us not forsake our assembling together. Let us not forsake our assembling together. And he said, as is the habit of some. They had developed a habit. It was a bad habit. The Hebrews had developed this bad habit where they're like, you know, I think I'm just going to watch the gathering online this Sunday and uh, I'm just going to drink my coffee and enjoy it in my PJs. And, you know, they developed this habit. And I think, you know, it's not just our church, but as many in the church. I'm just seeing all over the place, like, where did we get this idea that church was, was not important? Uh, we didn't get it from Scripture. We didn't get it from Scripture. We're basically listening. I'm preaching to the choir right now, but I just want to hit on this. Just say, listen, what God's building, he's building corporately. What God's doing, he's doing together. The, the church is essential. The church is essential. And you cannot have the same experience in person as you can online. Again, I know there's particular circumstances and reasons not everyone can come, but I just want to say, let's recover in our returning to the Lord, let's recover that, that uh, regarding of the corporate together. It's so vital. It really is so vital. Amen. I'm glad I had one amen there. Okay, Hosea continues, and he says, he has torn us. He has wounded us. I believe the Lord used, I don't believe the Lord initiated, I believe the Lord used 2020 until now. He used that to bring about a tearing and a wounding in his people. Because God wants to bring us deeper. And sometimes we can't go deeper until there's a tearing and a wounding. See, if, if, if left on our own, we are just going to naturally drift into a lukewarm expression. I don't care if we have the Spirit of God in us. Our soul has power, and just left on our own, we will gravitate to a lukewarmness, especially in America. America is a lukewarm church. We will gravitate to lukewarmness. We will gravitate to apathy. We will gravitate to this kind of this indifference. And I believe the Lord has allowed a tearing and a wounding to bring us back to him. But God's not going to leave us. God's not going to leave us in the tearing and the wounding. When, when you think about all that we went through, it's, it's, it's been the, one of the craziest times that's come. I, I want to read, turn in your Bible to 2 Thessalonians. I, I just saw this for the first time where, as we went through 2 Thessalonians. Some people think God doesn't judge his church. I, I want you to see what, what, uh, what, uh, what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians. He's writing to us, and I believe this is what the church has been through in 2020. He says, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your faith and your perseverance because of all the persecutions and inflictions you endure. Now, this is what verse 5 says. This, the suffering, the affliction, the trials, those are a plain indication of God's righteous judgment. See, the trials the church has been going through in 2020 is because God is bringing a, a form of righteous judgment into his church. And look what Paul said. He said, he's doing this so that you would be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. The Lord has allowed the tearing, the Lord has allowed the wounding to come. Thank God we're out of it, I think, hopefully, somewhat hopefully, but he's allowed it for a purpose. Don't miss that purpose. Don't miss that purpose. Because in that tearing and that wounding, God is not going to leave us in that tearing and that wounding. God is going to, which he, he talks about next, this is the, the heart of God, Hosea chapter 6, 
Back to Hosea chapter 6. He says, he has torn us. Now listen to the heart of God, but he will heal us. I believe that we've entered into a new season in the church of, of God's divine healing. And that would include, like Dad's been talking about, physical healing. That would include emotional healing. That would include spiritual healing. That's the heart of Jesus. He's the healer. That's his nature. That's his character. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. I am the Lord, your healer. That's the heart of Jesus, is he wants to heal. And I believe he wants to not only heal our bodies, but he wants to heal the things we went through, the experiences we went through, the pain we went through, the heartbreak we went through, the despair we've gone through, the, you know, just the disappointments, the regrets, the different things we've gone through. God, is, I believe, wants to bring healing to that. He has wounded us, but he is going to bandage us. That's, that is the heart of our shepherd, Jesus, is he wants to heal you and bandage you. I believe there's coming, and we're not going to pray today, but we will over the next several weeks, just the continued release of healing to come. Just, just people have been through, what people have been through, I believe the Lord wants to bring healing in those areas. Healing to anxiety they've experienced, depression they've experienced, uh, loss of hope they've experienced. God wants to bring healing. As we go into this next season, we can't, uh, we've got to have the healing power of God be released into our bodies. The next thing that I, I, Hosea says is, and this is where we're really, really pertinent for today, is he will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day. In other words, what, what I believe we're entering into is a time of revival and resurrection. And now that we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he is alive, and because he is alive, he is alive in you, and he is alive in me, that there is the resurrection power of God he wants us to live by. That Paul said in Romans chapter 4, he said that we have been crucified, with, we have been buried with him into, by baptism into death, into crucifixion, so that we might also have and walk in that newness of life. I just want to say we are on the verge of a great move of the Holy Spirit. I'm convinced of that. I believe we're going to have a great move of the Spirit of God here. I believe it's going to be a great move of the Spirit of God around the world. For those who are hungry, for those who are hungry, not everyone's hungry, but for those who are hungry to say, okay, we have had enough of doing church the way man has prescribed. We've had enough of tradition, religion, and we've had enough of just doing the stuff. We, we've got to experience an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I believe we are going to experience that. I believe that those who have responded rightly in this past season of pruning and judgment and crucifixion, I believe those who have responded rightly to those things, I believe God is going to bring a reviving, a revival, a resurrection, an awakening. Amen. I believe, I believe we are going to see a third great awakening in America. I really, really believe we're going to see that. Now, again, God's goal in this is not just to make America great. God's goal is to make his bride ready. The revival God is bringing is a bridal revival. It's a revival to awaken his beloved bride, the one he loves, the one his soul longs for, his beloved and his friend, his beloved bride. The Lord wants to pour out his spirit upon his bride and awaken her to fill her with his life, to fill her with holy passion and intimacy and fire for him. And so I believe as I, as I just prayed about this message, okay, Lord, do you want me to pre preach more of a traditional Resurrection Sunday type message or do you want me to preach this? I believe the Lord led me to preach this because I believe just as last Passover, last Resurrection Sunday, it was really a, 
a symbol, a time of the, of the church around the world going into a sort of death with Christ, a death to self. I believe that this Resurrection Sunday, that it is a time of resurrection. The death we've been through over the past year is now being raised up. God is now raising up his church who has been co-crucified with him in this past season, and now he wants to bring forth that resurrection. Amen to that, because we need it, don't we? We need that resurrection. We need God to do that, and I believe that's where we're at. That is where we're at as a church. That is where we're at as the global church, is that pruning has come, but now life is coming. Life is coming. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus not only was resurrected because he's the eternal son of God, he was not only resurrected because he paid the price on the cross for our sins, he's not only the resurrection because of that, he's also the resurrection because he wants to resurrect us internally and fill us with the life of God. The life of God. Living by the, by the indwelling life of God. I believe we're coming into a place, a time in the church where the Lord is cutting away all that's not of him. A cutting away of all that is of the self-life. A cutting away of that which is of the flesh. A cutting away of those things that, that are other lesser pursuits so that we might have more and more of his life. You think about when Jesus was on the cross as the second Adam. And Jesus died on the cross. And the Roman soldier, when he had died, pierced his side. And out of his side flowed blood and water. The blood was for the redemption of sins. The water was symbolic of the Holy Spirit who was to come. And just like God put Adam into a deep sleep, and he took out of Adam a rib, and he formed woman, Eve, out of that rib. God has formed the church out of Christ. When Jesus was being crucified on that cross, you, if you're part of his church, were being crucified with him. That's what Paul hits at in Romans chapter 6. If you are in Christ, if you have been born of the Spirit, when he was dying, you were dying. When he was being crucified, you were being crucified. When he was buried, you were buried. When he was raised to life, you have been raised to life. See, we don't, you know, to be honest, we don't need a, all we need is to realize what God's already done and who he's already put in us. If we just discovered the power of Christ who lives in us, we would have an awakening already. I'm convinced so much of the awakening that so many are longing for and praying for comes by discovery of who, in fact, it is inside of you. I mean, if we just realized that Jesus Christ dwells inside of you, God dwells inside of you, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you, my goodness, we would already have a revival. We would already have an awakening. But somehow we just get satisfied with learning about the Lord and doing religious activities instead of coming into that experience of intimacy, that experience of crucifixion, that experience of burial, that experience of resurrection. God wants to give you an experience of that. Amen? The same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. That is remarkable. How do we get to God? Well, if you're born again, it's as simple as turning inward. It's as simple as turning inward. It's not new age. That's, that's the heart of the new covenant. 
the heart of the new creation. Christ lives in you. Abide in me, the Lord would say. Abide in me. Abide in him. In you. You're not trying to go all over the place. So much of the church wants to say, we've got to go to this place or this place or this conference or hear this or go to here. There's a place for that. But I'm saying when you really discover, when you really discover who lives inside of you, the light bulb comes on. It's shocking. Let me say it again. Don't let this go to your head. Get a revelation of this. God help us. Ask the Lord real quick. Don't think you know it. Just ask the Lord. Lord, let us have a revelation. Not just head knowledge. Not just mental assent. Not just intellectual knowledge. Lord, let us have a revelation of what it means for Christ to live in us. Because he's alive, you're alive in him. Because he is alive and he was resurrected, he's alive in you. You have been resurrected. You are a new creation. You have a brand new spirit. You have the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead in you. He has made and created your spirit. One third of you is already saved. One third of you is righteous as he is righteous. One third of you is holy as he is holy. One third of you has been conformed into his image if you're born again. Isn't that incredible? That's why we celebrate Passover. That's why we celebrate the resurrection is because coming forth out of the second Adam, Christ was the church. Within Christ, the second Adam was his church, was his bride. So that we, having of his spirit, would become a new creation. Listen, we're an entirely different creation. Thank God our world's going to hell quick, isn't it? We have become insane. Like Paul said, professing to be wise, we become fools. But, I, you know, okay, our, that's whatever's happening is happening. I just want to say this. We are a brand new creation. We are of an entirely different kingdom. The one who was resurrected is resurrected in you. You are not part of the old creation anymore. We are a new creation. This is not just an individual thing. This is a corporate thing. When we, can, when we gather together on Sundays and whenever we gather, this is a gathering together of an entirely different creation. The world has no way to even identify this, but it is the new creation of God. The kingdom of God has come in a measure in the church by the Spirit. We live in a completely different kingdom, not of this world, because of the cross. And so as we bring this to a close, as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord, God is initiating a great reset. I, I just feel this jealousy from the Lord is we, the church has got to come in. We cannot miss this opportunity. I'm talking about our church, the church. We cannot miss the opportunity God is giving to his church in this time. May our eyes be open to what he has done so that we might build back uh, according to his eternal blueprint and not based on the gimmicks of the, or of the church growth gurus or whatever. You know, the people are saying, you got to do this, you got to do that. And then we get away from all of that junk, all the stuff God's torn down and build his church. I just made the jealousy of the Lord come on us to build what God wants. I don't want to give the Lord anything but what he wants. And what he wants is Christ. What he wants is Christ. What he wants is Christ in a people. See, all of our best efforts, like 
Cain and Abel, we see that, that picture. Cain and Abel, it's like God is not interested in, the, in the, us worshiping him with our human talents and our human resources and our human intelligence and all the creativeness God's given us. Listen, it's the blood of Jesus, it's Christ that he wants. It's Christ he wants formed in us. It's Christ he wants established in us. It's Christ he wants conformed in us. May that jealousy of the Lord come upon you so that we would say, God, may Christ have what he wants in his church in me as you bring this great reset. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you, and I just pray, Lord, that you would release a jealousy of the Lord into our hearts. Just receive this right now. God wants to get us out of our apathy right now. May God, may God shake us out of our apathy, out of our indifference, out of our lukewarmness. Lord, would you set a fire so deep inside of us? If you want the fire of God to burn in you more, just raise your hands right now. Lord, we want your holy fire. We want your baptism of fire. Lord, let you, even if you're watching online, raise your hands. We want a baptism of fire, Lord, that you would burn in our hearts, Lord, like never before. May we be have, maybe we consumed with the jealousy of your heart, Lord. God, may we have what you want. May we build what you want. Lord, let us return to you. Just, just right now, or if you need to return to the Lord, just if you need to repent, if you need to turn back to the Lord, if you have slipped, if you have fallen, if you have grown apathetic, if you've grown complacent, even if you need to get born again, just, just surrender right now to him. Just take a second, really, really, really. Take a second right now and do business with the Lord. Where do you need to return? Where have you fallen? Where does that fire of his jealousy need to burn? Where have you missed that simplicity of coming to him, of communing with him, of knowing him? Let him search your heart right now. Let him search your heart right now. May the Lord bring about a jealousy in our hearts for building his church, not upon human talent, human intelligence, human creativity, but upon Christ. Lord, bring us back to that life source that is Christ. We come back to you, Lord. We come back to you, Jesus. Lord, set our hearts ablaze with your fire and your jealousy. May our hearts be baptized afresh in you. Amen. I just want to say,